because of the human history in our forests, we've ended up with forests that were initiated by a non-natural event, logging, which is different than the way nature behaves when it replaces a forest. When you have a fire, it skips around, it leaves little patches, you'll have what we call biological legacy. You'll have old trees, you'll have down logs, you'll have big old snags that are left. This enriches the subsequent stand with diversity. It creates lots of little microsites, and over time, as nature seeds in with different species and they land in all these different microsites, you end up with a new forest that's diverse, and between the genetic diversity, the habitat diversity, and so forth, it's a little easier for nature to sort out the winners and the losers. Who's going to be the dominant tree and who's going to be the suppressed or the dead tree. When you have a human disturbance, logging, we used to do it so cleanly. You know, as foresters, we loved our trees so much, we wanted to give them all an equal opportunity. And we planted them on an exact grid so they were all exactly the same spacing from one another. And they're all the same genetic stock and they're the same age to the day. And so you end up with a forest where we want all our trees to survive and by golly if we weren't successful. But then you have something that would never have happened in nature. There's no way to differentiate between different trees in the forest. They're all the same. No one has an advantage over the other. This means that you have a slow motion fight to the death as they try and have some way to sort themselves out. There's some concern that if, if we even thinned in here that these trees have been here so long supporting each other that they might fall over. My, my family had 25 acres of forested land, which was a lot of it was wetlands. And after my d dad died, my mom was kind of in charge of, you know, maintain, or just being there. And so my son, my son and I lived here. We've lived here for, we lived here for 20 years, over 20 years. And she donated it to a group called the Friends of Freeland, which is, um, was thrilled because they wanted kind of a, a natural space right outside of Freeland. So that year that she did that, uh, she gave Brian and my son, who was a freshman at WSU that year, um, she gave us uh, some money. And so I said, Brian, we're buying our own forest. Music